I've been playing PC games for a really, really long time. And back in the old days when you used to use DOS computers, they came with these really big mechanical keyboards that were really, really awesome. I love the feel of them. I love the way that you could actually play games with them in a really fast and interactive way. And well, we kind of lost that. As years went on, we got more digital keyboards and stuff like that. But for the past couple of years, a lot of companies have been making a lot more mechanical keyboards and gaming keyboards and all these fun little things to make gaming a lot better on PCs. Now lately, what I've been using is a Logitech G510. In fact, it's this thing right here. This keyboard is a really neat one. It's got a screen on it, a volume rocker dial, and a whole bunch of specific keys for macros. But unfortunately, this sucker costs a lot of money. And I always assumed that anything that was cheaper than this would be a lot worse. Well, I was wrong. We just got a keyboard sent in to us from Tesaro, and it's called the Gram Spectrum. And it's a lot cheaper than this, and it's also a lot better. Now, despite its smaller size, the Gram Spectrum actually feels like a heavier keyboard, which for some people might be a turnoff, but for me, I kind of like it. A heavier keyboard means it lays on your desk and it doesn't shift around or move when you're really into some kind of gaming session. Plus, it's got rubberized feet on the back here that actually do hold itself down pretty well. But what really sets this keyboard apart from the other one is that the 510 does light up, but this sucker lights up like a rainbow. Seriously, look at this. This keyboard has its own RGB lighting setup behind every single key, so that means every key can light up its own specific color. You can set it up to have any specific kind of layout that you want, just light up the WASD keys and everything else is bright white or whatever, and you can do all of that kind of stuff with its custom built-in program that it has. It's kind of cool, but it might be frivolous for you if you don't really care about the lighting situation. Now sure, there's going to be a lot of gamers out there that really love the lighting effects that this keyboard provides, and believe me, they do look really cool. But personally, I don't care. The keyboard can light up any way it wants, but if it doesn't operate as a good keyboard, what's the point? In fact, for some people out there, even a little bit myself, we don't really like the keyboard lighting up so bright while we're playing games on the computer because if you have a reflective monitor, the lights actually reflect and bounce off the monitor if you have the keyboard close enough. So that can kind of be a negative. But if you want, you can turn off the lighting effects altogether. And I guess that's something people can do if they really want. And I will say this too, if you really do want these lighting setups to do something different, like program it to basically reflect how much health you have in a game, that's cool. But I really haven't played a video game that doesn't tell you how much health you have when you're actually playing the game. So, you know on-screen prompts tell you what's going on. I don't need the keyboard to tell me anything, which was a big problem with my Logitech G510 because it had that screen on it that told me what was going on whenever I was playing a game, but I never looked at it because I was playing a video game. So, you know, that's a thing. Most expensive gaming keyboards and media keyboards offer unique keys outside of the original layout of a keyboard. And by that I mean, well like play buttons and pause buttons, volume rockers, and in some instances unique macro keys that can't be set up for anything other than the macros you set them up for. I find those features cool, especially in expensive keyboards, and this one does have the ability to record macros, but it has to record them to original keys on the keyboard itself. So you can basically hold function and then S, and then it'll do some kind of recording you did. And it does have play, pause buttons and all that stuff, but they are interfaced with a function key with one of the F keys at the very top. I mean, guys, this is not a cheap keyboard, and it does have those functions, but I really just prefer it didn't have the need to use a function key to access them. I guess you can get used to it over time, but personally, I'm not a fan of that. So with all those criticisms out of the way, what makes this keyboard so good? Well, to begin with, all the keys are kind of this low profile thing. They're not really flat, they're not really big, they're somewhere in between, which is really good because you can roll your finger from one key to another easily without having any kind of hiccup or caught on the side of a key or something like that. Something else I really like is the travel distance of the keys are really short, but still long enough to make you feel like you're pushing the key down properly. Then on top of all of that, it uses cherry red MX switches, which are very responsive mechanical switches that have a good feel when you're typing things. They also have a great little sound, which I'm a big fan of. Plus, this has possibly one of the best keyboard key setups I've ever used in any keyboard in my entire life. 
With every keyboard I've ever used, whenever I pushed the spacebar down on a specific section of the key, the spacebar never went down all the way. It would get caught on the mechanics itself. In some cases, it just would feel squishy and not responsive. But it didn't matter where I pushed the keyboard keys on this at all. Every single time I pushed the spacebar anywhere on the spacebar itself, the entire key went down flat. And I know that seems like kind of a small feature, but when you're playing as many games as I do, you start to notice when you don't jump on time because the key didn't register your push. No matter what game I played, no matter how hard I hit this keyboard, it constantly responded accurately every single time. That's what a keyboard like this should do. Look, it does all those RGB lighting features and it has all that basic stuff like that, but this keyboard at the end of the day is a solid keyboard and that's what you should be getting it for. You like the lights? That's great. But this thing here works as a good keyboard first and foremost. And if that's the kind of stuff you're looking for in a gaming keyboard, well, I don't really know anything else at this price range that works this well. Sure, you can get a G510 or one of those keyboards from Logitech, but they seem to be really expensive nowadays. And I don't know, a lot of the features on them just seem frivolous. And although this does have a couple of features that are just kind of pointless, like the lights, the keyboard itself does work just that well. If I can find a keyboard in the future that works as well as this one for a cheaper price, I'll let you know. But until then, the Tesaro Graham Spectrum is possibly one of the best gaming keyboards you could get.